One of the things that businesses really struggle with these days is creating a consistent messaging strategy with your clients. Hi, I'm Zach Spader with Cornerstone Solutions, and today I'm going to show you how to build workflows in Zoho campaigns. I've navigated to Zoho campaigns, and I'm going to click on automation and workflows. I haven't created any yet, so I'm going to click create my first workflow. And before we get started today, I want to say that Zoho has created quite a few templates for workflows that are built into the system. There may be any number of reasons that you would want to create a workflow. Um, Zoho has workflows for onboarding, for nurturing, uh, re-engagement, retention, things like that, that are already built into the system. You can use one of these templates and go from there. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a workflow from scratch. Instead of choosing one of the pre-built campaigns, I'm going to click on custom workflow and give my workflow a name. The first thing that you need to do is design a trigger. This is how the records are going to enter your workflow. What action is it that they take that they get put down this particular workflow? There's a lot of different options here. I'm only going to talk about a few. Some of the more common ones are the list entry, and this would be that somebody is added to a list within Zoho campaigns, a segment, entering a segment, this is that you've created a segment and somebody meets the criteria to enter into that segment. These two options are popular because both of them give you the ability to not only trigger this for new people that get entered into the list or segment, but people that are already in that list or segment. So really quickly to show you that, if I wanted to choose the segment trigger, I drag and drop that onto the screen, and then I click the select segment, and in the configuration screen here, I have the ability to select the segment that I want to trigger this for. And then you'll see that I have some additional options down here. I can trigger it for existing and new contacts from the segment selected, only new contacts who enter the segment, or only the contacts that are already present in the segment. So the list and the segment options are one of the only options that you can choose um, to trigger this workflow for people who already exist in that state. Most of the other triggers are things that will only work going forward. I'll show you those next. So let me cancel out of this. I'm going to get rid of this particular trigger, and I'm going to choose the field update. So many of you will have your CRM connected to campaigns. You may have fields from the CRM synced to campaigns so that when particular things happen in CRM or field options are chosen, that those field options sync over to Zoho campaigns as well. So the on field update is a way that you can trigger a workflow based on a criteria of a field. And so I can select that field, what I want that field to be, but you'll see here in these options that this is only going to be for contacts where this is triggered in the future. Anybody who currently meets this criteria is not going to receive the workflow. So just be aware of that when you're designing a trigger. For demonstration purposes today, I'm going to choose list entry. I'm going to click select list and choose my newsletter list. And I want to trigger this for existing and new contacts. It's also good to note that you can choose multiple triggers for a workflow. There may be instances where you want to have different criteria for entering a particular workflow, or you may choose one of the options for your trigger that doesn't allow you to trigger that for people who already meet that criteria. And so you may have to add a trigger like a tag being assigned to trigger that workflow for people who already meet the criteria in the system. Once you've defined your trigger for your workflow, there are two other types of functionality that workflows have. One is process and the other is actions. Now process are just things like flow control and conditions. If you want to split or merge the workflow, um, this process section will allow you to do that. The other section is actions. 
And this is where you're going to spend most of the time building your actual workflow. These are where most of the things that the workflow actually does take place. And so, of course, you see things like sending an email, uh, sending an SMS message. There's things like adding or removing from lists, assigning tags, adding scores, lots of different functionality here that you can do. You can even push information back and forth between the CRM or create tasks in the CRM based on actions that happen in the workflow. We're going to keep this pretty simple today, and I'm going to start by just simply adding an email message into this workflow. So I'm going to drag and drop this into my workflow. Now, once I've dropped it in, you'll see that there's an exclamation point. This is basically just letting me know that this particular email message is not ready to send out. We haven't created a subject or a message line or anything like that. Um, this is just letting me know that this needs more action before this can be approved. Once I've dragged the email message into the workflow here, um, I'm going to click on Create Message. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this next screen here. Most of you are going to be familiar with it if you created campaign content in Zoho campaigns before. It's basically a step-by-step -step process of making sure that that campaign has everything in it that it needs to be sent out. So you have to define a topic, give it a subject line, decide who the sender is going to be, and create your content. Again, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this today. I just want to show you basically how to build the workflow itself. So let's go back to the canvas. So we've got our first email message in here. So as soon as somebody enters the newsletter list, they're immediately going to be sent this first email message. Now, the second email that gets sent out, I want to create a little bit of a delay. And so um, in the actions here, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put a wait time in. And so after this first message goes out, we're going to click Edit. And then I want to set a three-day wait time. So the first message goes out, it's going to wait three days, and then it's going to send the next message out. Now, you have a lot of functionality within these wait times here. So you can choose, OK, um, only send the message between a certain time period of the day. So even if it meets the three-day wait time, don't send it until you know eight or nine o'clock in the morning. You can also say, don't send this e next email um, if it's not a if it's a weekend. You know, so you could only perform the action if it's Monday through Friday. That allows you to be able to kind of control when your emails are hitting people's inbox. If you don't want them to hit on weekends, or maybe you only want them to hit on weekends, these wait times uh, criteria here allow you to select um, the specific criteria that you want to use for sending out these messages. OK, so I've chosen my wait time. I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to take another send email box. And I'm going to drag this in. And you'll notice that as I drag these boxes in, that it's automatically connecting them from one to the other. Now, I can go in and I can change how these are connected by hovering over the individual line that connects two boxes. And you'll see that there's a little scissors that appears here. And I'm able to um, click that button to snip that particular line, and that will cut that if I need to rearrange the boxes in any particular way. So now we've got our second email message added into this particular screen here. Again, the process is going to be the same with this email message. Um, once this is um, added in, you're going to have to configure this message. You're going to click on the create message. You're going to enter in the topics and the subject and the, the, the content and everything like that. It is also good to note that um, once you've created all of this message content and filled in all these details in the email messages, these do have to be approved just like any other email campaign message that gets sent out from Zoho campaigns. So once you complete all of the actions within this create message screen here, you're going to be given the option, just like you are in a regular email campaign, to send that message off and have that approved. And you can't activate a workflow until all the email content that's in that particular workflow has been approved. So it won't let you activate it unless you've gone through that process. So in this particular case, I'm going to continue on here. Um, after the second message gets sent out, I'm going to add another wait time. 
And this time I'm going to choose seven days. And then I'm going to choose um, one more send email. Again, you would normally click create message and create all of your email content and those details. I'm going to kind of skip over that today. And then, so these are the three actions that I want to happen in my workflow. So they come into the list. They're going to get sent email message number one. Three days later, they're going to get sent email messages number two. Seven days later, they're going to get sent email message number three. So in total, this workflow is going to be 10 days long. Now that I have defined all the different actions that I want to happen within this workflow, um, I have some extra functionality here to remove them from this particular workflow. So I can just click exit from workflow. If I have a follow-up workflow, let's say that you've designed um, you know, five, six different workflows, you could exit somebody from a workflow into another workflow. Um, for this particular purpose, I'm just gonna use the exit from workflow, but I wanna do one thing um, before I do that. I always think it's really good to add a tag onto a record um, that denotes that it's been down a particular workflow. That way you can easily look at a contact record and see the workflows that it's been down. So I'm going to click the assign tag and drag that into my workflow here. And I'm gonna click create new tag. And I'm just gonna create a tag that is the name of the workflow. So it says drip campaign. And then I'm just gonna add completed so that I know what that means. So it means that this person has completed and gone all the way through the drip campaign. Okay, click done. So now it's gonna assign the tag I can do other things like if I wanted to push information to the CRM or maybe create a task in the CRM, I could do that. But in this particular case, I'm just going to exit it from the workflow after this. So when you get done creating your workflow and you're satisfied with it, of course, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to need to um, get all of the email messages approved. But once that's done, then you'll be able to click the button up on top here to activate this particular workflow. And so, of course, this is just a very basic workflow, but you can get much more complex with this. You can run multiple workflows at the same time. You can have hundreds of different actions in the workflow, but it's always good to have a starting place. And so hopefully the video today has given you a good base from which to start your workflows. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like it and leave us a comment. You can also subscribe to our channel and click the bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. If you want to learn more about Zoho or would like help with anything Zoho related, head on over to our website at zcrmhelp.com to connect with us. Thanks for watching.